Hey guys, today we get to make a top 10 cards in Dominia, which you might ask, huh, how did we get here? Well, a lot of the set was spoiled, and Wizards of the Coast confirmed within a few hours that yes, the leak was real. Now we get to enjoy Microsoft document. We get to uh, enjoy our it's astounding that we are going to do card. We're going to spoil cards without artwork on Microsoft documents. Not even like PDF. So we will start with Tefi, Hero of Dominia. Free a white and a blue legendary planeswalker. Starts with four loyalty. I, lo I like this card, but I have it as number 10. So this is my top 10 list. Plus one draw a card. At the beginning of the next un end step, untap to land. That's pretty good. Card draw is always good. Minus three, put target known land permanent into its owner's library, third from the top. Minus eight, you get an emblem when with whenever you draw a card, exile target permanent and opponent controls. Obviously, the ultimate is kind of hard to get without a doubling season, but it is backbreaking. Squee. Now, Squee from Mikadian Mask, he was a very vital part of the crew. I remember like one of their plans was because Squee, Squee doesn't die. That's he just doesn't die, was to launch him at like the enemy and then the enemy would uh, like infinite amount of times. So legendary creature goblin, he is a 2-1. You may cast Squee the Immortal from your graveyard or from exile. So very, I, he was probably my one of my favorite members of, of the crew. I would, I would say Hannah is number one and then Squee would be number two. I didn't like Gerard. To say it was kind of cool. I really didn't like Khan, Silver Golem. So when he became like the new Phyrexia main hero or villain, depending on how you look at it, I was like, eh, okay, cool. Obviously, Urza and Misha and all that, the legendary brothers wore. So I'm still kind of shocked that this is how we are going to spoil these cards. We have Lyra, which is, I'm. Am I going to guess? I don't have the artwork in front of me because this is the way that we spoil cards now in Microsoft Documents. I'm guessing it's Rare's daughter or sister or somehow related. It's very good. Free double white, legendary creature, angel. 5-5, five, five, first strike, flying, lifelink. Very similar to Bane, Bane Slayer. It doesn't have the dragon protection, and but it has a bonus. Other angels you control get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. So Angel Tribal is going to be really cool. I'm going to go ahead and say this card in foil will be incredibly valuable. Uh, foil Mythic Angels are valuable. Foil Mythic Angels who are also Lords do not exist. Making this unique. This probably is the card I would want at pre-release just for my collection. Otherwise, I definitely will buy it. All right, next card, J.R. Ballard, free, uh, two triple red, something we don't really see up very often, triple red, Planeswalker, five loyalty, plus one, add triple red, spend this mana only to cast instant or sorcery spells, plus one, discard up to three cards and draw that many cards. I like her plus, her second plus one seems seems abusive i'm not sure what deck would want to play obviously a madness deck could benefit from it but it's a lot of card draw which has potential and it's a lot of card discard which has potential minus eight you get an emblem with you may cast instant and sorcery spells from your graveyard if a card is cast this way that would be put into your graveyard exile it instead it's pretty good I am very happy to, for her to get a Planeswalker card. And I believe the only Planeswalker we're missing is Khan. Some different version. Oh, I no, we do have Khan here. But he's not in my top 10. Uh, Grun, the Lonely King. Four double green, ape warrior, five five, kicker free. You may pay additional free as you cast a spell. So you can pay seven in double green so nine if grun the lonely king was kicked it enters the battlefield with five plus one plus one counters on it 
whenever Grunt attacks alone, double its power and toughness until end of turn. It does not have Trample. No Trample. That being said, I have it on my top 10 because it is a ode to how we used to play Magic, which is a smack in with big green creatures. And that was... They did a good job picking this card. Um, I can appreciate it as someone who's played since beta where all you wanted to do was hit in with as big of a creature as you can get. And plus, he's an ape warrior. He's a legendary ape. I don't need to say too much other than that. All right, Mox Amber. This could possibly be the most powerful card in the set. For me, it doesn't... I mean, Mox Amber. Moxes are very iconic. Hmm, maybe Iconic Masters. Should have had something like this. Legendary Artifact. Tap it. Add one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. This is going to be an EDH staple for years to come. Extremely powerful. It's going to be a modern staple. This is the most powerful card I've seen in a while. I've always kind of boo-hoo-hooed the standard sets for being incredibly weak. This set is not weak. And Mox Amber is... It's so good. Imagine it in Infinity. Infinity. Infinity would play this even without the mana, right? They're playing far worse cards like Chrome Mox. This is way better. Um, this is way better in terms of mana acceleration, in terms of an artifact being in play. One of the strongest cards I've seen. All right, Derigaz, Reincarnated. So back in Evasion, you had all five dragons, and they all had the backstories. I really appreciated the lore of the dragons. Magic when I was a kid, it was all about those dragons and angels, and that was it. And the triple color dragons, the tricolor dragons with their own land, and it was just really incredible time. So I'm glad to see Derogast back. Legendary creature, dragon, flying trample haste. If it would die, would die exile instead with free egg counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Derogaz is exiled with an egg counter on it, remove an egg counter from it. Then if Derogaz has no egg counters on it, return it to the battlefield. Not the strongest card, but really unique. And I'm glad that they made reference to these dragons from Invasion that just are so epic. There was nothing more fun to play during Invasion than your giant dragon. All right, um, Aya, Knight of Wind Grace, to a white and a black, or, yeah, it's a black. Legendary creature, Human Knight, 4-4 four, four, Vigilance, two and a white, create a 2-2 two, two white knight creature with Vigilance, black, and tap, tap X, untap knights you control, destroy target creature with power X or less. Now, I'm very excited about this card because it's a big body. A creates tokens, which one of the strongest cards when I played when in middle school was mobilization. And when you look at how good cards have gotten since that time, mobilization was like you made one one soldiers for two and a white, and it was considered one of the better cards. This is a token generator commander that can pump out tokens, and the tokens actually have utility to them. In Limited, this is going to be one of the strongest cards in Limited. It produces tokens when you can't, don't need to. It's a big body, and it destroys creatures. It's, it's removal that can be repeated, and it's tokens that can be repeated. Limited, it's going to be amazing. All right, Chandra. This is the Planeswalker deck only, meaning we are missing one Planeswalker uh, from the Planeswalker deck. Four double red legendary creature Chandra. Five plus one add double red. Chandra Pyro Bode Pyromancer deals two damage target player. Minus three. Chandra Bode Pyromancer deals three damage target creature or planeswalker. Minus seven. Chandra's Bode Pyromancer deals ten damage to target player and each creature and planeswalker they control. So it's a typical Chandra card. I have it as my number two because I'm expecting the artwork to be gorgeous on this one. And, you know, Chandra's pretty interesting Planeswalker. I like the Planeswalker deck. Planeswalkers, they are very simple to use and they're easy to explain to new players. 
All right, so pretty much that does it. Um, I do want to leave you with this image of Khan. Um, he is the big baddie Planeswalker. I think he's going to be one of the strongest cards, if not the strongest card in the set. It's nice. It's a very nice set. It's actually more powerful than Masters 25, to be honest. Uh, Masters 25 was a disaster. Why did they spoil this set? Who really knows? I don't actually know. But I would guess that uh, what happened was they accidentally sent it to somebody they shouldn't have sent it to. And then that somebody published it. Um, it got out online. And then they had to do damage control, which they did late, late last night. But anyway, these are my top 10. Let me know if you guys have any other cards that I've missed or you have a different order of it. Probably Mox Amber should have been ranked higher. Maybe Chandra should be ranked lower. But I think having more Chandra's is always great. Anyway, bye guys.